what I wanted to do is to, uh, to, to take you through the results of the CPEIR that we did in Armenia. Um, and what this, if you recall what this is, is this is for kind of the backward looking diagnostic assessment of where, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get it to, to work on my, there we go. Um, this is for kind of a backward looking diagnostic assessment of where, how well the country is currently integrating climate change issues into its public financial management systems. Included in that is one element which looked explicitly at the expenditure um, pillar, which was thinking about how much of a budget historically has been allocated to addressing climate change. And as I explained before, often once countries have done this backward looking exercise of, exp of the expenditure analysis in the CPEIR, um, they then take it forward and decide they want to introduce climate budget tacking into the, into the, into the future forward looking budgeting exercises that they do. So this is, this is the approach. So um, and we, this was an analysis which was undertaken as part of the EU for Climate project between May and December of last year. Um, and uh, it, it, as I mentioned, it included both the expenditure analysis as well as a policy analysis as kind of assessing how much climate change policy translates into programs and objectives and the way that those programs and objectives are reflected in the PFM system. And then the institutional setup as well how effective are institutions in formulating and implementing climate responses, especially and especially as it relates to, to public financial management. This will also be, um, it, the work also included a, an assessment against the climate change budget integration index, uh, which we will, uh, which we will um, discuss tomorrow. So what did the uh, expenditure analysis within the CPR, CPEIR look at? So to go, if we go back to the previous presentation, um, and I gave the kind of the different options on coverage um, what, and, and granularity. So that's why we've got these little icons here. In relation to coverage and granularity, the expenditure analysis looked at the spend of all ministries between 2017 and 19. It looked at both investment spend um, and recurrent expenditures. It um, included donor expenditure because the uh, PFM systems in, uh, uh, in, in, in Armenia include donor expenditure because it's all on budget already. It only looked at, um, uh, at spending. It didn't look at taxes and, how, and, and the extent to which taxes were relevant. Um, it only looked at central government, but that reflects that Armenia is a unitary state. It didn't look at expenditures or transfers to state-owned enterprise. And in terms of the granularity, Armenia has a programmatic budget, and within the programmatic budget, the analysis was undertaken at the activity level of that programmatic budget. So that kind of hopefully maps quite nicely onto the options that I was presenting in the previous presentation, explaining how these different options in relation to coverage and in relation to granularity were decided upon in, in relation to the expenditure analysis in the CPEIR. Then in terms of the, the classification on and the taxonomy, you'll recall previously I said that the classification could either be done on an objectives basis or a policy basis. And the approach drew on an objectives basis and to identify activities which were objective, which had their objectives rooted in climate change. We looked at a range of different sources, including the MDB climate finance tracking framework, OECD DAC criteria, and although not listed, we did also, we were also informed by the EC taxonomy. We then categorized those expenditures into one of three categories. We either said this is a mitigation related expenditure, or this is an adaptation related expenditure, or we said this had a, a kind of a mixed impact. And then within those mitigation, adaptation, or mixed, we then had a preliminary further breakdown into eight different mitigation areas and seven different adaptation areas, which reflected the priorities which were which were kind of embedded or, or can be taken from Armenia's NDC. So mitigation, adaptation, and mixed, and then split into the 15 different um, areas which we identified uh, through the NDC. And then 
what we did is we 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 followed the weighting approach which I described in in the previous analysis. So first of all, we took all of the budget lines and we allocated them um, as either being category one. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Uh, category one, which was the direct relevance, which was a seventy-five to one hundred percent, which was for things where the principal object, the objective of undertaking the expenditure related to climate change. But when the program was designed, it was designed to try and achieve climate related outcomes. Then we had the high relevance of activities um, where uh, the objective was not climate related, but we still were confident that the program was going to deliver significant climate related benefits. Then we had the moderate relevance for category three where we said, okay, we're, we think this delivers climate benefits, or we know this delivers climate benefits in the short run, but we're a bit worried about what it does in the long run, and maybe those benefits are, are not so high. And then we have the lowest relevance as well, using the, the approach which I, I explained in the previous presentation. And for category one, we have these 90, 65, 40, and 15% weightings. And then we kind of budged things up and down, depending on whether or not we thought there were lots of uh, adaptation and mitigation co-benefits, which meant that actually this was a particularly attractive or a particularly important activity from a climate related perspective, because it was hitting both mitigation and adaptation goals, or we nudged things down where we were worried that were trade-offs. So maybe this was doing a lot to support adaptation, um, but we were worried that it might also be emissions intensive. And in those cases, we nudged the weightings down a little bit. So we started with these center ones and then nudged things up or down according to that assessment of the, of the co-benefit. So that gave us our, our matrix of different weightings that we used for the uh, expenditures which we had identified as being climate relevant. What do we see in the results from this analysis? So what we can see is that the uh, between about 2017 and 19, um, own around about 3%, just over 3% of the overall budget, state budget, was found to be climate related. Um, and that this uh, was a, a slightly falling trend, um, uh, going, going from around 60 billion, um, uh, uh, 60 billion dram, my apologies to our Armenian colleagues, from 60 billion dram down to about 35 billion dram over the period. Um, and that was consistent with the, the percentage of climate relevant expenditure in the budget going from 4% down to 3.3% down to 2.2%. So the assessment that was drawn from this analysis was that over this period at least, um, climate change had been a relatively low priority of expenditure, especially um, in, in some of the other line ministries beyond the climate change and environment ministry in, in Armenia. Um, but what we also found is whilst there was an overall declining trend, what we could also, also see from this analysis is the proportion of the expenditure which was coming from internal sources, so from domestic sources, was actually steadily increasing. So whilst it was only 42%, 43% in 2017, by the time we came out to 2019, actually, uh, a, a, a larger proportion, almost 55% of the uh, of the total uh, expenditure, which was identified as climate relevant after weighting, and the weighted climate relevant expenditure, 55% of that uh, was from internal sources. So we could see that this expenditure was increasing over time. We could also see um, kind of where the priorities were within um, within the Armenian. Uh, PFM system, where, where the kind of the budgeting priorities were. So we could see here the green reflects those activities which are primarily adaptation related, and we can see that these represent the, the largest proportion of the um, of the overall spending over the three periods. Um, although that proportion was declining somewhat, um, and then we saw we see also that um, uh, the, the mixed impact was growing. Uh, 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 quite significantly in terms of proportions over the period. Uh, I think that largely reflected increase in, in, in forestry and environmental related activities, which have both mitigation and adaptation benefits. 
not on the chart, but what we saw when we did the more detailed analysis was that when we looked at the looked at what was driving these numbers at a sectoral level, we could see that actually an awful lot of the activity was accounted for by adaptation related activities in, in relation to agriculture and irrigation, which were going to um, support um, support uh, the country in, in, in conditions of, of water stress and, and in drought conditions. And that there was also a, a lot of it was accounted for by transport related expenditures, both a combination of public expense, public transport, uh, which would be helping to drive down emissions, as well as um, some transport expenditure, which we felt was going to be increasing the coping capacity of people who were threatened by climate impacts um, by it making it easier for them to access uh, to, to bring goods to market and to access goods and services at times of climate stress. So those were the um, those were the kind of the key results, and then in terms of kind of our four categories, so we have the type the one, two, three, and four. What you can see is that this is after our weighting exercise. So after applying those sixty five, those ninety, sixty five percentage percentage those respective percentages I described here. So after applying these different percentages in this matrix, what we found is that the vast bulk of the overall expenditures were accounted for by our category two expenditures. So these are things which are, we think are going to deliver climate related benefits, either adaptation or mitigation. And we've got the evidence that those deliver those benefits from international experience. Um, but actually at the moment, there's very little recognition of the fact that they, of, the, of those benefits in the um, in the objectives for policy. So Armenia is doing an awful lot, uh, uh, an increasing amount of activity, which is climate related. But at the moment, very few of those budget lines are explicitly mentioning climate as an objective. And we actually saw this as one of the possible kind of benefits of undertaking the expenditure analysis and would be one of the benefits of undertaking climate budget tagging is that it would increase awareness within line ministries of how their activities that they're already undertaking are climate rele relevant. And once countries and line ministries have greater awareness of how activities are already climate relevant, then they can look to increasingly design those activities to make sure that those climate benefits are being, um, are being maximized over time. So we actually saw this as an opportunity for kind of potentially one of the significant benefits from undertaking this activity would be to increase awareness of, of climate, the, the climate relevance of lots of activities and to encourage uh, line ministries in Armenia to, to really state climate as an objective of their programs and to design their programs accordingly. We also, as I mentioned, had a, a, a quick look uh, at the, well, not more than a quick look, but the, the national consultant spent a long time working on both the policy and the institutional pillar. And in relation to those, I mean, the overall finding was that uh, uh, we concluded that the, the climate change had been, at least historically, a relatively low priority for the government. But we also saw that through undertaking this review, that there were signs that this was changing and that there were uh, increasing efforts being taken by the government to, to integrate climate change ever more fully into the, into the, um, into the uh, Armenian system and into the Armenian policy and in, therefore into the uh, public financial management system as well. So in relation to the policy, we found that up until over the period of the analysis that we had done, so 2017 to 2019, um, climate change had been largely not covered in any single comprehensive document, um, but that it has been left the sector development plans. But as we were doing the analysis or during uh, looking forward, um, we're very aware that that is changing and that there are uh, kind of significant developments that have already happened in that regard and more happening in the future. So I think that that's an, an assessment which if we were to not if we were to look into the future, rather than uh, to look at it over the period 2017 to 2019, we would get quite a different set of results. Um, and what we also saw in relation to the institutional side of things 
is that we were challenges because the Ministry of Environment had a, a, a responsibility for climate policy, but didn't have as much mandate to engage in the climate relevant programs of other ministries. And that made it difficult for, for kind of sharing best practices about how climate relevance could be built into the programs of other ministries. Um, and that there was a would was likely to be benefit from greater uh, work on with the uh, giving the interagency coordination council on climate change more status and more scope to 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 bring together different stakeholders, uh, and also that at the moment we saw a relatively low involvement of civil society in 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 the kind of this setup for Armenian climate policy and also in this scrutiny of. Um, public financial management and budgetary systems as it related to climate change. So from that, uh, we developed a number of recommendations or the National Consultant developed a number of recommendations for how um, kind of the strengths that, that were being created in Armenia could be further strengthened over time. In relation to the policy framework, uh, they related to developing the adaptation and low emissions development strategy, which is now uh, firmly on track, or uh, um, as we heard earlier, um, developing results framework from climate change policy so that they could be fully kind of integrated into um, the different nine ministries and people could have a set of clear um, understand and a clear understanding of what it was that they were expecting, um, that what they should expect their programs to be able to deliver. Um, and that sectoral policies should 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 really think about how they can fully integrate um, climate change related policy objectives into their overall objectives. So it should be a much clearer um, requirement when developing sectoral policy to also think about um, and integrate climate change related considerations into those sectoral policies. In relation to the institutional framework, um, the the analysis recommended. Uh, but to enhance the status of the interagency coordination uh, council um, by bringing chairmanship under to a very senior political level, um, and that would help with bringing together different line ministries and this integration between the climate change and environment ministry and these other ministries, which were largely responsible for for, for climate change considerations. Um, to extend the mandate of the council to more explicitly support coordination between. Uh, different agencies and to make it easier for agencies to understand how they could balance different priorities and to work on a range of initiatives which had already been developed around increasing civil society participation in the council and to strengthen those even further. And then in relation to specifically in relation to the PFM framework and the expenditure analysis, we rec the analysis recommended the development of a climate budget tacking so that um, everything we've been talking about today could be integrated into the Armenian uh, public financial management system moving forward um, to develop a range of indicators which could be used within um, the climate budget tagging mechanism so that people could track where the climate change related programs were delivering the performance that was expected to make sure that alongside climate budget tagging that actually the parliamentary procedures which were being um, was parliamentary scrutiny that was done of, uh, of the budget was explicitly designed in a way which would allow for scrutiny of the uh, public expenditure on climate. So to kind of enhance that accountability between, um, between the budget setting process and the parliamentary scrutiny of, that pro of the budgets as it relates to climate change. And also to consider um, uh, climate impacts um, when prioritizing investments and programs. So those are a range of the recommendations that emerge from the uh, CPEIR. Um, and um, it would be uh, I, I, it would be very interesting from my perspective, in particular, but perhaps from others as well, to to hear kind of a response from 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 Armenia and if they had any reflections on the value of the CPIR exercise in 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 Armenia and kind of the extent to which any of the recommendations which were made from the analysis um, are, are are being taken forward. Thank you.